Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. Just kidding. Hey, art people. Don't forget to subscribe if you love learning about art. This collage artwork is so much fun and you don't even have to draw anything. It's all based on watercolor washes and then collaging so you can make a watercolor landscape without drawing a thing. This artwork is inspired by my favorite artist of all time, Vincent Van Gogh. As a kid, something about his vibrant colors, his imperfections, and the obsessive layers of paint just really spoke to me. Also, we have the same favorite color, which is yellow. In my personal art, landscape painting is my passion. I love traveling, I love being outside, and I just love capturing the spirit or essence of a place. For our landscape today, we are gonna start with watercolor washes. A wash of watercolor is a large section of paint made with a lot of water. We will be making two sets of watercolor papers that we will then use to collage together our landscape. This is gonna help you break down the parts of a landscape and not worry about every single detail. The sky is blue, so start with a large section of blue and you can overlap into your paper to make it as dark as you want. I have found that actually using cheap paper works best because we're gonna be ripping and gluing these uh, pages down. A thicker watercolor paper, it's doable, but it doesn't have the same effect. So cheaper for this is actually better. My next color is magenta. If you don't have magenta, you can use red, and when the red and blue or magenta and blue bleed into each other, it's gonna make a violet. You want your washes to interact and not just be separate stripes of color. Next, we're gonna go to orange, and you can see that gorgeous red-orange created when it goes into my magenta. Now, my magenta is really pink. If you don't have pink, red will make a gorgeous color too. Overlap as much as you can, and if your paper buckles a little bit, that's okay. As I mentioned earlier, yellow is my favorite color. Van Gogh described yellow as a religious experience because it was so beautiful and so pure. For me, I just think it's the happiest color. And unfortunately, using cheap paper, your yellow is not gonna shine as much as you may like. Um, a thicker watercolor paper will enhance your yellow, but again, when you're tearing and collaging and gluing, cheaper is better. So I overlap as much as I can without ripping my paper. So the top section of our washes we're gonna use for our sky and the bottom section we're gonna use for our ground colors. So the yellow and green can mix together. You can use the yellow for a sunset or a sunrise and you can also use it for a wheat field or for a patch of land. Green is an obvious choice when doing a landscape because so much of nature is green. I'm gonna make my green a little bit thicker so I have plenty to work with. As your paper starts to dry a little bit, you can go back over and put a second coat so you can get more vibrant colors like you see me doing with the orange. Remember though, if you're using cheap paper, you don't wanna go over and over and over and over it, just enough to get the right vibrant color scheme you're looking for. Brown is an obvious choice when doing a landscape too because so much in nature is brown. So don't be scared and overlap to get a gorgeous chocolate brown that really can pop in your landscape. Let your paper completely dry. Next, we're gonna be making greens that we're gonna have for our trees, bushes, and plants. You're gonna mix every color with green on a smaller piece of paper. This is not a wash, it's wet on wet, and I'm just kinda dabbing, yeah, I'm dabbing right now, my green, and then I'm gonna dab a second color on top of it. Now keep in mind every color mixed together makes brown, so I'm making little separate sections where I'm gonna go through my paints and overlap. So I have green and magenta, I have green and orange, I'm gonna move on to green and yellow until your paper is full. You want a nice variety of greens to use in your trees and plants, inspired by Vincent Van Gogh's giant cypress trees. Now that you have the hang of it, let's speed things up a little bit. I'm moving on to blue, I have some violet, brown, and then I'm gonna end with black. As it dries, your colors aren't gonna be as vibrant, so I'm gonna overlap a couple times to make sure that my green is really mixing wet on wet with my other color. If you feel like you use too much water, you can take a paper towel to absorb any little puddles that you've made. Once your watercolor papers have dried, you will need a new surface to start collaging. 
It is up to you whether you want your landscape to be horizontal or vertical. Although most landscapes are traditionally horizontal, I'm a sucker for a vertical landscape so I can focus on the sky. We're going to start with the sky and you're gonna tear across your paper horizontally to tear off sections that look like clouds. I know it's scary because you created these beautiful washes, but this is how your landscape is gonna to come to life. A glue stick is my material of choice, but somehow all of my glue sticks are completely dead. You can try this with Elmer's school glue, like the liquid white, but I think it makes your paper really bumpy and it doesn't dry very clear or shiny. So if you have it, you can make it work, but I'm gonna end up using for this matte medium, which is similar to Mod Podge, and I'm gonna paint it on with a paintbrush. Typically, I do this with just a glue stick, so if that's all you have, that's perfect. You're gonna piece your collage papers together like a puzzle, and you wanna keep your color going in the progression that you painted it. Like, you wouldn't have just a patch of orange in the corner, it would be that blue-violet. I'm getting glue on the table, so I'm gonna put something underneath so I don't ruin the wood. The neat thing about tearing this watercolor paper is it reveals kind of a white edge, which gives your sky this cloud-like dimension. You can make your pieces as big and as small as you would like, but keep tearing it vertically and keep your progression of color in a way that makes sense. I'm letting my paper extend off my cardstock um, because I know I'm gonna come back and trim the edges. You can glue this down to any paper you would like, but something thicker usually works. So every time you see me using a paintbrush with my Mod Podge on it, you would just be using a regular glue stick. That's what I use at school and it works great. So my sky is gonna end up being mostly blue and violet, but you could totally go all the way down to yellow to create the sunrise or sunset effect. I live in Oklahoma and we have giant skies with the most gorgeous sunrises and sunsets, but I'm gonna end up using those colors for my ground. Notice that I'm overlapping horizontally and I'm not using any straight lines or edges. So you wouldn't put like the square part where the paper ends on your paper. You want everything to be a natural organic shape. Speaking of Oklahoma, if I were to do this progression of washes again, maybe I would start with black and mix black into my blue to create those really thunderstorm tornado skies that we're so used to in this part of the country. Some advice I have about collaging is only tear the piece you're using at that current moment. Don't try and like tear up your whole paper and then make it work. Work with your paper as you go so you don't have a million pieces that you can't use. I'm gonna stop at this kind of magenta orange blend and then I'm gonna start considering where is my horizon line and what color is it going to be? A horizon line is where the sky meets the land. So if you've ever been to the beach and you're looking out into the water, that is where the sky is meeting the water. The cool thing about this work of art is your horizon line can be whatever color that you have. You want it to be something that contrasts or is very different from the color you just used. So I ended with this kind of orange magenta, so I'm gonna do a cool color to contrast that warm sky that I've created. My horizon line is gonna be green, so think about like rolling hills, green landscape. Um, and I've had students use every color you can think of. So I've had even like blue mountains where it looks like Colorado. I've had students even do like an orangish brown that cuts into their collage. It really just depends on the colors you've created and how your sky develops. Pick something that's gonna stand out and really set the sky apart from the ground. You will be using scissors to cut your ground pieces because although the tear looks really cool for the clouds, you want crisp edges when cutting out your horizon line and the other parts of your landscape. You can also overlap to create the look of hills, mountain ranges, or pastures and prairies like here in Oklahoma. There are three main parts of a landscape and you've already finished your background. 
which includes your sky and your horizon line. And then we're gonna be moving on to the middle ground and the foreground. I'm gonna add one more layers of mountains to kind of end that horizon line. And I'm gonna let a little bit of brown show so there's a transition of color. The middle ground is exactly how it sounds. It's the middle ground. It is the middle part of your painting. So things here, as far as shape and size, are getting smaller, but they're about medium sized. So if you were actually standing in this landscape, you would be standing in the front or the foreground, and the middle ground would be a walk away, like a 10 minute walk. So as things go back, they get smaller and things closer get larger. As far as what color to use, you wanna choose something that's different from your horizon line and background. I could continue with my brown and just make sure it gets darker so it stands apart, but I have a lot of yellow and I think yellow looks really nice against the green. I'm adding a little bit of brown to cut into my middle ground so there's a transition between my background and middle ground. Foreground is the very front of your landscape. Choosing that for me was a little bit tricky. The brown was too dark. I felt like it matched too much of my background and I didn't have a lot of my orange left over. So if that happens to you, you're in control of the size of your paper. I'm choosing orange because it's super vibrant and it just pops forward. It's similar to yellow, but different enough that you can tell that it's getting closer or more towards the front of your painting. So think of your foreground, if you were actually standing in this landscape, this is where you would be standing. This is the closest to the viewer or the person looking at your work of art. Now that I have all the parts in my landscape, I'm gonna trim my edges so I have a clear view of what this actually looks like. This is going to help me visualize um, where I'm headed next. I'm also gonna trim the very bottom because I didn't have enough orange to fill the space, so no problem. I'm just gonna cut that away and pretend like it never existed. I'm happy with my work. I feel like my sky is really vibrant and transitional. My horizon line is clear, and now it's time for emphasis. Emphasis in an artwork is the part that the artist makes stand out and noticeable the most. And for our landscape, that means really beautiful Vincent Van Gogh inspired trees. It's time to get your smaller piece of green paper. I'm gonna show you two different collage techniques for your trees. First is you're just gonna cut the shape of the tree, making sure that it's an organic shape. So no lollipop trees and no perfect triangles. As far as size, if the tree is in the foreground, it's gonna be big. So the farther the tree goes back, the smaller it's going to be. So for us, if we're putting our trees in our foreground, they need to cut back into the background into your horizon line so they look like they're the right size. I like to just do more than one because this is kind of a sad, lonely tree all by itself. And usually in nature, plants and trees grow in groups. I'm making sure my tree is really dark also so it looks like it's right in front of me. For my planners out there, you can totally draw on the back of your paper so you get the exact shape that you would like. I know there's different types of people out there. I've got my planners and I've got people like me who just like to cut and see what happens. Because we mix so many colors with our green, it's really great for groups of plants and trees because every green is a little bit different. This one's a little bit more blue, so although it looks like it's in the same group of trees, it stands out just enough. Keep in mind, there are no straight lines and edges when it comes to nature and plants. So I feel like the bottoms of my groups of trees are a little bit awkward, so I'm gonna overlap a patch of like this brownish orange so it looks like there's just something cutting in front of the trees. Um, this doesn't have to be done, but if you feel like the bottom is awkward, that's a great solution. I could totally stop here. However, I'm gonna show you a second way to collage a tree, and this is gonna be my Vincent Van Gogh tree. It's gonna be huge, and it's gonna go off my page. And although this is a little bit more work, I find it a little easier to control. And you're gonna start by putting a big area of glue wherever you would like this tree, and then you're gonna rip and tear small little pieces to create a tree that has lots of texture and overlapping. 
Be careful with the colors that you use. You want them to kind of spread out amongst the tree. And because this tree is so big, do you see it's going past my horizon line and into my sky? Because it's the largest shape, it needs to go off the page and into the sky. I find it more natural and easier to just tear my pieces instead of trying to cut them. Whenever I try to cut them, they're like perfect little triangles that just don't quite look realistic. Your hands will get a little sticky, and if you're using a glue stick, remember, it dries clear. Craftsmanship is the time, care, and attention to detail that an artist puts in their artwork. When it comes to a collage, it is very important that all of your pieces are glued down and everything looks very careful and you pay attention to where things overlap. I always tell my students they might not be able to control like how good they are at drawing, but they can always control the effort that they put into their work. I'm going to trim my edges one more time and then I think this thing is finished. And here it is, a watercolor landscape collage that shows a foreground, middle ground, and background with trees as emphasis. I get such great results from my students and I love seeing how surprised they are that they can make a landscape even if they think they're not good at art. This is a simple way to understand the parts of a landscape, how to make things go back in space, and how to use watercolor to create beautiful, vibrant blends of color. Thanks for watching and check out my website, thatartteacher.com.